this acquisition challenge is called attending workshops. So this is a C++ coding challenge. We're going to solve it in C++ and the difficulty level for this one is medium. I've just switched my view to the full screen. This challenge is broken down into different parts and every part is focusing on a specific aspects of C++. So we're going to be looking at structs for quick revisions and we're also going to look at structs with constructors. We're going to look at double pointers and also dealing with arrays in the form of pointers. We're going to have a predicate function and we're going to use a greedy algorithm approach. And this is basically what the challenge is about. A student signed up for a certain amount of workshops and that student wants to attend the maximum number of workshops without having any overlapping issues. Here's an example. Let's say I'm attending workshop one. It's between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. These two workshops here are overlapping with workshop one. We know they are overlapping because their starting time is before the ending time of workshop one, which is the one I'm attending right now. But I can attend workshop four because it starts after workshop one. So once I'm done with that workshop, I can attend this one 15 minutes later and attend it until 12 p.m. So we need to calculate in our function for this solution, what is the maximum number of non-overlapping workshops that the students can attend? The first part of this acronym challenge is about a structure. So it says we have to create a struct called workshop and it's going to have the following members, a workshop starts time, a duration, and an end time. If you look at my right here, the solution, I have the same thing. I have struct, a struct keyword, because I'm creating a struct right now. The name is workshop and it has three member variables. Now, the second part is we have to create a struct called available workshops and it's going to have two data members. So the first one here is an integer, they are calling it n, and it's going to correspond to the number of workshops that a student has signed up for. So let's look again here at my right, I'm scrolling down and I have these structs right here. It's called available workshops. So first I have this member variable, it's an integer called n. This is what they're requesting here. And then they also say that we need an array of type workshop having size n. Remember here that workshop corresponds to this struct. So when we talk about an array of size n, we're talking about a variable length array. So when the compiler is compiling our program, it needs to know the size of our array. So what I have here is my array. It's called workshops and it's a double pointer for workshops. So the reason why this is the case is because I intend to have a constructor so that when I'm creating instances of that struct, I can pass a value for n here and then create my array at the same time. So my array is going to be here, it's called workshops, and it's going to be an array of workshop pointers. So again, this here is workshop the struct. I'm going to have workshop pointers and these workshop pointers are going to reside in a collection, which is an array and I'm calling it workshops. Remember that this new keyword returns a pointer and it's a pointer to the first position inside my array, but my array is already an array of workshop pointers. So that's why we have a double pointer right here. So at runtime, when this line gets called, num here is going to be the value of n because here in my constructor, I have n equals num. So when I create an instance of an available workshops inside my program later on, I can pass a value for n is going to be assigned to my actual member variable here called n. And then that value is going to be used to create an array on the heap. And that array is going to be an array of workshop pointers. I also need a destructor to deallocate memory. And now we can move to the third part of this acronym challenge. So now they say we need two functions. One of these functions is called initialize and it's supposed to return an available workshops pointer. So that initialize function is supposed to have an array for the starting times. So these starting times are going to be integers in an array. We also need an array of integers for the duration of every workshop. And finally, we need an integer for n. Notice here that it don't give us an end time array because the end times for every workshop can be deduced from the start time and the duration. In other words, if I have a start time at 10 a.m. and I have a duration of 30 minutes, I know that the ending time for that workshop is going to be 10.30 because 10 a.m. plus 30 minutes is going to be 10.30. So this is the logic here. We can deduce this ourselves. And if you look here, we know that we need to return an available workshop sponsor. So I'm creating one here and I'm calling it AV workshops. This uses a new keyword. So again, the new keyword returns a pointer. So it's perfectly valid. And I'm saying new available workshops and I'm passing the value of N here 
So n is what I'm receiving. It's a parameter here. It's going to be represented by num and assigned to n. So this is valid. Next up, I'm having a for loop. It's going to run n times because start time and duration, both arrays are of size n. And at every iteration, I'm creating a workshop pointer that I'm calling wk. And I'm assigning the starting time at position i to the start member variable of my workshop pointer. Because wk is a pointer, I can't use the dot notation. I have to use the arrow notation. So the start time of this workshop, which I'm creating during this iteration, is going to be the start time at position i inside um, the start time array. Same thing for the duration, the same logic. And for the end time is what I just explained. I can get the end time by adding up the starting time and the duration. And then once I have the values for the start time, duration, and end time for my workshop, I can assign that workshop to my available workshops array. Remember that every available workshops object is going to have a workshops array. We are now updating every element inside this workshops array through this for loop right here. And then once I'm done, I can return AV workshops. So AV workshops was an available workshops pointer. And this is exactly what our function expects. Now let's look at the second function that we need to implement. It's called calculate max workshops. And it's going to receive a pointer, which is of available workshops type. So an available workshops pointer as the parameter. And inside of that function, we are supposed to calculate the maximum number of workshops that a student can attend without overlap. The next workshops cannot be attended until the previous workshops end. Remember here that at the beginning of this video, I gave you an example and I said the student cannot attend workshop two and workshop three because these workshops have a starting time that is before the ending time of this first workshop. So if the student attends this one, he can't attend any other workshop with a starting time before the ending time of this one right here. So he can attend workshop one and workshop four because workshop four begins after workshop one. Now, technically he could attend a workshop starting at 11 a.m. Let's say they are just in the next room, he could attend this one and then quickly at 11 a.m. walk into the next room to attend workshop four. So this could also work. To calculate how many workshop a student can attend, we need these values here, the starting time, and the ending time. So you know that we are going to compare two workshops to find out if there is any clash or any overlap. But this year, workshop is going to be an object. So how is our program supposed to understand if a workshop is valid or not? So that's when we can have a predicate function. It's going to return a Boolean, either true or false, and it's going to serve us in our comparison. So I'm going to have a workshop pointer for the first workshop and a second workshop pointer for a second workshop. So this predicate function is going to be used when we compare two workshops together. So here I'm saying, if the ending time of the first workshop is less than the ending time of the second workshop, then this is going to return true. So of course, they don't ask you to have such a predicate function, but it's very useful because here we can use a greedy algorithm approach. The first thing we can do is sort the workshops based on their ending times. So I'm using here the sort function from C++. So this is going to point to the first position inside my workshops array. And this here is going to point to the ends. So I'm having the workshops array, the pointer plus n. So n here again belongs to my available workshops pointer or my pointer object here because it's a member variable. So when we use this calculate max workshops function, we expect this PTR to be a valid pointer. In other words, we would have already initialized our available workshops pointer to be used in that function right here. So now that our workshops array is sorted based on their ending times, we need to return the maximum number of workshops that a student can attend. So we can see this as an optimization problem. So these two values are set to zero. And then we're going to have this for loop that is going to run n times. And inside of that for loop, we're going to compare is the start time of the workshop at position i greater than or equal to the current ending time that determines the validity of a workshop. So at first, we don't have any value for our ending time. So this implies that a student can attend the first workshop. So we count it as valid, that's one. And then we update the value of this variable here, attending end. So if the student is attending the workshop at position i, then the ending time of that workshop at position i should be the value of this variable here. So that at the next iteration, we can use that value to determine if the next workshop is available. So if the next workshop starting time is greater than or equal to our current ending time, meaning the ending time of the current workshop that we're attending, then we're going to consider it as a valid workshop. 
and so we're going to increase that value. Because our workshops array is already sorted, we're going to get the maximum number of workshops that the student can attend. Once we're done, we're going to return this value here. Valid. So that's pretty much it for this hacker rank challenge. I just need to point out that when you're using a predicate function like this here, you need to use a strict weak ordering. Otherwise, if you have something like less than or equal to, you might get some um, unexpected behavior. So now I'm going to run this code. We've passed sample test case zero. So I'm now going to submit this code. We have 16 test cases and we just pass all of them. So that's it guys for this hacker rank challenge. It was called attending workshops. If you like my solution, please subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, and I'll catch you next time.